All right, boys and girls, good morning from a very brisk morning here. We're actually at the Minnow Bucket, those of you who know Blake Fork. I'm here with Jerry Page, a fellow Kilgorean from Kilgore, Texas. And we're going to get out today in his Falcon F215. Now, this is a 2019 model, so there's a couple of changes to it. You said that you think the seats have changed? The seats are different for sure, I know. I'm not sure what else is different. I know y'all can't hear him very well because I'm wearing a mic, but he said he knows the seats are different. But so this is a 21 inch, 21 foot, five inch. But I think generally I just wanted a sense of the boat. It's a pretty boat. So you see, I'm sure there are trailer steps available on the boat. I cannot see. So it's torsion axle system, no shocks. Nice tandem, you got to see the F2, which is that Fulton jack you guys hear me talk about all the time. Uh, and the Fulton winch as well. Excuse me, I said Fulton jack, Fulton winch and Fulton jack as well. Real clean. It looks like Jerry cleans it when he puts it up. We're going, boy, I'm terrible. Mine is so bad. We're going to do the... Okay, so by the way, if, if, if I got this right, this is a big boat. This is a 99 inch beam boat. And across the front deck, yeah, 67. So that's what I thought, pretty wide. And I would imagine the back's gonna be wide too. This should be a really, really stable boat. Eighty one inches. inches across the back. And you know what? Okay guys, so we're reviewing down there at the bottom the Falcon 215. Now, what I'll tell you is, now I'm doing this review during the holidays, so it appears that Falcon's boat factory is closed and I've not been able to get a hold of whoever their regional rep is, but it looks to me like the F21 Tournament Edition TE boat is the same haul. I'll confirm that before I do the final uh, tally on this boat, but that's certainly what it looks like. It looks like they make it as a package boat and then as a sort of a totally loaded boat but um and, and interestingly on the falcon on this particular boat it does not look like an ultrex is an option you can buy any of the other trailer motors but again i'll confirm all that before we complete this review but but what i will point out here is it is the widest beam of any boat we've looked at at 99 inches but that really doesn't carry forward in fishable space so it's 67 inches across the front deck kind of middle of the pack yeah probably a little bit on the large side of what we've looked at kind of reviewing the grid we've had some 68s we had a 71 mixed in there uh, and then 81 across the back deck which is uh the wide as wide within an inch of anything we've looked at so uh, it's a wide boat it's a slightly heavy boat now i'm, I'm not going to go really into the weighting of the boats because it, it it appears to me that not everybody has the same standards for how they weigh these boats. If I did this full time, I would love to go down to the to the pulpwood mill and start weighing these boats, but um, uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. So this boat appears to be a little bit heavier, not nearly as heavy as the Skeeter, but for 21.5, heavier than the Rangers for sure and several of the other ones. So, and you're going to see the, the weight and the uh, and the, the 99 inch beam is going to have a pretty significant impact on the speed of the boat. So we'll get to that a little later in this video. And you know, while we're here without the possibility of me falling out, you guys have heard me talk. I really, really liked originally the Basscat removable back lid. And then we got in, what was that boat? The Skeeter who had the split back lid. And Falcon's done something which is maybe even cooler. Show us that back lid, Jerry. You can open up this side cranking batteries over here so there's your cranking battery or you can open this one to get to the trolling batteries the trolling batteries are there and then there's a center one and then this piece up. boy there's that is clean isn't it now one of the things I noticed, now he's got his seat in here, but what Falcon shows you is, if you remember what I liked in that other boat, you could fold that up and basically make a culling station there where nobody's getting out of the boat that you're not ready to be out of the boat. You can take these six screws out of this plate and all your pumps is right under this. 
So you heard Jerry say that you just pull those six screws and you got access to your pump. Now that's something I like. So I just had to tighten the motor, uh, the motor uh, bolts on my boat. And you can see those are really, really easy to get to and to get a wrench on. That's super handy. That's a well laid out. It's got a nice LED light right there so it lights up real good. And boy, it is just super clean. Super clean. That's pretty cool. I really like this back deck lid. That's cool. You can work on it whether you're in the boat, on the water, or even if you got it in a boat stall. You can just get to it real easy. All right, so there's a reason you keep a toboggan hat in your golf bag in the back of your truck. It's because then you forget your toboggan hat in the boat, you got a fancy toboggan hat with a ball on top to wear. So I just made the first pass in the Falcon. Boy, it bounced out of the hole. Now, in fairness, I'm a little more than half a tank. I'm gonna say I'm about 55, 60% full of fuel and the live wells were empty, but back into a pretty good wind right there. I ran it 72-1. So I'm filling the live wells up right now and uh, we're gonna do a hole shot on it. Let me turn that back camera back on. You know, it's funny, I hadn't been on fork in a long, long time, but it brings back so many memories from the early 90s when we spent a lot of time down here trying to catch a big one. This is where we came. Now, one thing I've noted is this console is pretty far back. It's You gotta kind of slide up under it. I like once I'm up under it how it feels, but now again, this is a 19, they may have moved that. So all I'm telling you is if you're six foot six before you buy this boat, you need to climb up in it and make sure you're comfortable getting in and out of that spot right there. And that, that could have changed, but I can just observe what I've got. And there's not a ton of Falcons around. So let's do a whole shot when the live well's full. Let's we'll see what we do. Get off of this pump, get where I got deep water. It's interesting, the boat, and it's obviously something they've done on the back of the boat. It stands real high and then it just bounces over. Now, note here, Jerry does not have a hydraulic jack plate. He's got a fixed jack plate, but it really bounces out of the hole. Alright guys, so this is me just really making the boat crawl and what you see here is it'll, it'll do it down into the 20s. There's a tiny bit of porpoising going on. You can see from the wake bouncing out on the right there, but overall super steady, way down into the low 20 mile an hour range, certainly 24, 25 mile an hour range. Uh, I, I would expect this to be a pretty good performing boat for a, a 21 foot 5 inch boat in rough water, at least from a nose control standpoint. I, you know, it's hard to say how much side splash you're gonna get out of a boat, but uh, from a nose control standpoint, it's slow speed, uh, pretty impressive. It, it's uh, as good as most we've looked at, a couple better, but as good as most that we've looked at. I've never seen one of these, but that's pretty smart. It's got basically every kind of kill switch attachment to it. It's a little cumbersome because you gotta look for the mercury one, but for doing what I'm doing, which is in and out of a lot of boats, that could be pretty handy. Okay, so just kind of looking the boat over. Um, I know in the new ones you can put a 12 inch flush mount in the dash. I love the flat spot, you know, we've talked about that. If you want to put that other graph up there, you've got a flat spot. They, uh, so there's a, good, there's a pretty good video on uh, the Falcon website. Audio challenges, so I'll just dub this guy. So good video on their website talking about uh, the founders and how they came up with the idea to make the boat. But also with some of the things, and it's similar to Phoenix, uh, instead of putting fancy stuff in the boat, putting stuff in the boat that's going to work and not break. And for example, there you see they have toggle switches on their dash. And I talked through this period right here. So this is an actual shot. I didn't get a good video, so I thought this is a shot from their website of the control panel, and you see it's the old style rocker switches. And what I like about it is, as opposed to you know, like it's not as aesthetically pleasing, for example, as my Ranger uh, push button dash. 
but it's also not 190 bucks. If one of those rocker switches go out, I, I think you can buy one for under 20 bucks. So it's similar to what Phoenix has done, where they're taking stuff that, although maybe not as, as, as aesthetically pleasing, uh, it's just simpler and it's easier fixes and it's just stuff that you don't have to carry it back to your dealer to get fixed and spend hundreds of dollars. Now Jerry pointed out some things to me and this was one of them for example. This is their ice chest and what he pointed out to me as opposed to putting a raised lid on their ice chest they just put that little piece of gasket, gasketing around the ice chest and what he said is you get out in the summer you get in a, in a hot rain shower you know 80, 70, 80, 90 degree rain it runs in your ice chest and he said although it will hold two full bags of ice it's a big ice chest you know nothing worse to, for an ice chest than putting hot water on top of your ice so i just feel like that's something somebody really didn't think through which you know i mean it's a you know they've been building boats for just a few years uh and some of the things they're probably going to need to fix i suspect you know they've got a big pro staff uh surely they'll listen to those guys and they'll start fixing some of these problems because if jerry's having the problem and if I'm seeing the problem then it's a you know it's something they need to get on and fix and you're gonna see well for, here's another example this is the passenger day box which is right below the, the port side rod box and it's obvious there's no lip built up on it it's actually almost set up to have water drained into that box you're gonna see later in this video now maybe they fixed this on the new models but, uh, and, and by the way, this is from their current website, this particular picture, so it's obviously still an issue. But the bottom of the seat flips up and there's nothing under it. So it just felt, and, and guys, I didn't set out on any of this to bash anybody's boat. I'm looking for my boat. But as I've done this, I've seen things and learned things of what I do and what I don't want in a boat. And, and water in the boxes is one of the last things I want in a boat. And it just seems like a few of these things are still kind of works in progress on this boat. I like the idea of the boat. They're making a very pretty boat. But I felt like as I went through this boat, there's a number of things they still need to work through. Uh, and this is one of those things. And you know, guys know my feet on that. I, I, would, I would rather have a toggle switch set up like what they've got here uh, than the push pads that you see in a lot of the boats. Just simpler. If one of those toggle switches goes out, I mean, I don't think those cost more than $15 or $20 versus the, you know, the push panel in my Ranger is $300, I think, or, yeah, I think it's $300 if you're not in warranty, so um, I like the simplicity of it. It's well laid out. It's easy to get to. I've got my cleat right there, my driver's cleat right there. Now, in this particular boat, the plugs down there are cigarette lighters, but you see Jerry's got an adapter in here, I believe. Uh, in this boat that uh, the new ones have actual USB plugs in them. So he's gone with analog that, uh, gauges. I really like them. They're simple, easy to read. Uh, it's interesting. I told you I felt a little tight in the cockpit here, but then I like the height of, the, of this. So uh, it throws the wind over you really nicely. Um, it, it feels snug in the cockpit. Probably the snuggest I felt. And again, this is a 19, so maybe in the 20 and the 21s they've moved these around some. I don't know. You guys, feel free to comment on that if you know. I like the boat. I, I wanted to say it had a little side slop coming across there, but as I'm looking, I basically had a one and a half foot C kind of pushing me side to side. So I can't really say that was side slop. That's just sloppy C's coming across there. Let the live wells run empty. Not flipping the deal. All right, they're full. I'm gonna do a little uh, a little speed run here when we get up here and see what we got in this thing. So uh, I probably should also point out, you guys are gonna see the first part of this pretty quick. I don't know how quick. <coughs> excuse me. I don't know how quick you'll see the second part of this. And reason for that is. Um, as I pointed out with a couple of the other smaller boat makers, uh, you know, uh, Blazer, for example, uh, their websites aren't as robust as other websites. It's a very static website. You know, there's just pages and there's there's not lots of option pages. Phoenix, the same thing, uh, which Phoenix is a big boat maker. They need to spend some money on that. But it's really uh, almost impossible to see the options. I've not yet found the Falcon rep in the area, so I'll probably try to track him or her down but for example it's carpeted floor I don't know if they've got a C deck option in there 
Uh, there's a lot of things I want to ask somebody either at the factory or a rep. And uh, you, uh, uh, if they're like most manufacturers, they're closed down through the New Year. So I'll post this uh, the week between Christmas and New Year's. So I may not have all those answers. So if that's the case, I may be 10 days before I get up part two of this, but I will get part two up once I have the answers to those questions, guys. Let's do a speed run.